give ourselves over. We surrender to this world and say to ourselves, this is my world. So at first, this seems to consist only of um, three horizontal planes. We have this part, and this, and this. Um, and then I notice there are regular edges. You look at it more closely. So it's not, they're not just rectangles, of course. And um, the, there are also blotches in the painting. So this isn't just a bad slide. It's not, it's more obvious in this upper, more yellowish uh, rectangle streaks and so on. And of course, there's also this separation <coughs> of the upper the upper rectangle from the lower rectangle. So, what do I get out of this? It would be kind of interesting. Actually, if we really had time, I would ask all of you, as I would ask of my students, what, what do you experience with, the, with this Rothko? Some people just draw total blanks, and other people, as Rothko said, would weep in front of his, his paintings. So, um, as I see it, I use the word see deliberately, there are ascending orders of being represented here. That these, whoops, these first two, this one <coughs> and this dimension, are two orders of everydayness, as I would, the word I would use. That this is life experienced as we know it more in its um, more, um, it's, it's less exciting to mention what Virginia Woolf calls those times of cotton wool when nothing really seems to be happening especially. And then we also live in this plane of um, what I word life experienced in its demandingness, in conversations, real conversations, in struggling with a problem, in desire, <laughs> in anger, in laughter, in worry, in doubt, and so on. So these two aspects then seem to point to something other. And this is a separation suggesting that there really is a leap to a third plane of existence. It's interesting, too, that when we think about a hierarchy of knowing, it really does, the images that philosophers often use are ladders for climbing out of, the climbing out of caves, whether it's Spinoza or, or Plato or whoever, usually is the sense of hierarchy. And I think that that captures something, if not, if not essential to human beings, perhaps something that's very much in our uh, Western culture. So above there's this pale, shimmering, translucent, yellow domain, signifying what? Well, the way I take this is these are moments of illumination in our lives, uh, of understanding, for example, when we reach an understanding of a friend that we haven't had before, or when we're in a situation with someone or maybe more than one person where things are exactly right, where things come together. It's an unusual moment, but there's something I find about the top band extremely satisfying. <coughs> And there's a kind of, for me, uh, a tranquility in it that's different from the lower plane. So my experience of <coughs> this is that there are three orders of feeling, cognition, that define our lives, how we perceive the world, and they overlay different obscure domains. 
And that's this, is the surroundings of it. Namely, there are three planes, and then there's this sacrum underneath it all. And for me, this other domain this, uh, really raises a question as to what it is. But uh, my, sen my sense is that it's something that we want to know, know about, um, that it raises a question, but at the same time, we feel it as a question that we haven't answered and perhaps cannot answer, perhaps will never answer. And my own sense is that this level is, well, for lack of a better way of putting it, a being itself, or the question of what underlies our whole existence. So while these three planes have more to do with the world that we know and can make sense of, that there's something beyond that that is still uh, is there, but which poses a question that that occasionally we might ask, like what is being, but which for the most part is just left as a question. Have I gained anything by my immersion in Rothko's painting? Am I simply repeating a way of thinking and believing? That is part. That is part of my whole outlook to begin with. I don't think so. I, I mean, yes, it's consistent with my whole disposition towards the world. But no, I feel it has a certain kind of power and persuasiveness, even urgency. So that not every painting will do this, obviously, for me or for you. But that some paintings will do that. Uh, they'll provoke us to see. <coughs> feel differently, or if not truly differently, to reaffirm and consolidate and give more credit to what we were earlier inclined to feel and believe about the world. Um, and as I was mentioning at the beginning um, in the book, where I really talk about the, what's behind all of this, and th this might strike you as really just uh, a little bit extreme, that everything that we encounter is caught up into this domain of what Heidegger calls significance. The Deutsamkeit is the German, that in the end, each moment of our existence, in a way, is tested against this sense of my life being at stake, at issue. So that it isn't as though the world is, consists of objects out there and I'm over here and occasionally I have feelings about the world and other times I don't. On this whole view that, that uh, is really either in the background or explicit in my book, the idea is that significance, Deutsamkeit, is something that we're always coming to terms with and it is the ground uh, for the significance of art, that art focuses the um, kinds of experiences that we have in our everydayness 